All right, so we're gonna do a modification to the Power Wheels car. I've done the first modification to the four wheeler. Uh, we use a DC motor, a 3D printed bracket for a Milwaukee battery, a fuse holder for sure, and this thing is crazy. I haven't mounted anything in here because I wanted to test it to see how well it was gonna do. So here, so you can see it's got some holes for mounting and this was uh, 3D printed to fit the Milwaukee battery. You're gonna get way more runtime. Since it doesn't have a fuse holder, you're gonna need a fuse holder of some sort. I got all of this off Amazon. This is a DC motor, so you can see left, power positive and negative, right is the motor. And uh, the reason that you want this, or need this, <laughs> is because this is an 18 volt battery. And these things normally run off 12 volt batteries. So with the uh, controller, you can go full blast, 18 volts, or tune it down. And let me tell you that four wheeler at 18 volts, it's fast. So luckily for me, I have quite a bit of room in the car for mounting. I need to figure out why this motor's a little loose. Maybe figure out how to fix that up. But you know, always pay attention to wiring. What I did on the four-wheeler battery is I took the top cap off of it, just verified. Positive was positive, negative was negative. Took a little bit of test fitment. I was gonna put the battery over here, but I decided to put everything under the driver's seat because that's what we were used to taking off anyway to charge everything up. So I did do a test fit on the battery to make sure everything was gonna fit in here. I am just using double-sided tape for everything. Um, the 3M, scotch, whatever. This stuff right here is really, really good. So now I can actually wire up the negative side of the battery and I can wire up the motor plug for now, uh, the negative side, but I do need to leave the positive leads open. Um, on the battery side because I do need to put a fuse on that lead. Something I forgot to mention earlier is you want to be able to access this knob because this is what will control the amount of voltage you're getting out of the battery to the um, motors. So to attach the fuse holder I'm just using a just a butt connector is what I call them and I'm gonna wrap it up in some tape. All I have is orange right now so orange is what it will get. And also, on these terminals, my objective was actually pull the screws out and use these rings. But that didn't work, so I can show you a modification on how to get these to work if this is all you have. This is the modification I made, and actually it works out better. I just cut a little bit of the end off, and if you slide it in, if I can do this one-handed, it actually snaps in. down and the battery is all wired up so next up is cutting these leads off here and wiring them to the controller there this is the battery that come out of the car and although I would like to assume that black is ground and uh, red is positive same thing for in the car uh, black is ground and red, red is positive I'm gonna err on the side of caution here and the good thing about these batteries uh, is that these are actually just cases and also inside of them they have a fuse holder um, so whenever you pop these off you can actually see the positive terminal and the negative terminal and again this is just a cover on top of the battery on this particular battery these just pop in so you can just pull them out very easily pull the cover off and just verify um, the wiring here um, because again if it is backwards um, hopefully the fuse catches that error but otherwise you're gonna send uh, that voltage uh, or the reverse polarity voltage to the uh, the car itself so in this this was uh, come out of the full wheeler over there this one had the fuse on top which was super handy but again whenever you open the cover on it you can actually verify the positive and negative leads. This one did have some screws 
holding it in, but this is super simple to take off there. Again, just, just verifying uh, what is what before you start cutting and, and giving power um, to the motors or motor. This is the plug out of the car. I don't want that to touch anything because it's actually plugged into the battery. So I cut the plug off the car and it looks like I'm gonna have just enough length to get it where I need it on the controller. Uh, but the reason why I'm showing you this is because I did cut the plug off. Um, same thing with the four-wheeler. And I left some length here in case for some odd reason, I don't know why I would want to, but if I ever wanted to go back to the original battery, I left some length here so I can add these back if I ever wanted to. But um, the second thing is uh, with the length here, it allows me to verify uh, what is what. So I do know that red is positive and black is negative. And again, this is this is hot. Um, so, um, I mean, it's 12 volts. It's it's not going to do anything bad. But, you know, if it touches metal or if these two wires were to touch, um, you might have a little 4th of July show. And it's not going to be big by any means, but just, just be careful with it. It is voltage. Um, so, yeah, that's another way that you can check and verify uh, the polarity and making sure that the uh, cabling is correct and also I know I've said it multiple times but I do leave length on here in case I go back to those at any point. With the wiring all completed again I don't really care what it looks like um, I wanted everything on the driver's side because that's where we were used to unplugging the battery that was here. Now got it sitting on a bucket the motor is actually at full speed, and whenever you press the gas, pretty quick. We'll turn it down a little bit. You can hear that the motor has slowed down. Actually, there's two motors on here, but and you can actually turn it down all the way and get nothing. So, a um, couple things to note here. Full speed. A uh, couple things to note here. Um, I think are positives. Number one, this is a full life battery and I do have a half life Milwaukee battery, but I already have a Milwaukee tools. So these batteries um, are gonna come in handy to me regardless in the car or not. Less weight in the car. Uh, wish I had a scale. I would actually uh, weigh the two differences. Then this battery uh, should give us a lot longer run time. Um, so yeah, super, super easy install. I'm gonna leave the links to all the equipment below that I purchased for this uh, particular setup. And again, I mirrored this setup over here. I just need to do some mounting. Um, the good thing I said earlier is this is 3D mount printed um, and it already comes with the prongs there. The battery snaps into it just perfect. So this area is gonna be a lot more fun to tidy up because it's smaller. But this area worked out pretty good. So I'll tell you what, before we end the video, let me throw the seats in here real quick. The seats are installed, and just like I figured, fits perfectly on here. Uh, we don't ever lock these. Pull the seat up. There is all of the um, equipment that I installed. So super easy to get to. Battery will lock into place. Pull it out. Throw this on the charger. Throw it in my drill, one of the two. So now I can actually, I can get rid of this plug over here that I don't need to charge up the car anymore. And I can get rid of a couple batteries, but a couple other plugs over here that I don't need anymore. So thrilled, thrilled, thrilled with this upgrade. Um, this is not my specialty by any means, but it's not difficult at all to do. Actually, had I not made the video, it probably would've taken only like 10 minutes to do, but again, battery snaps in there. Good to go folks so if you have any questions uh, leave them below probably need to get some helmets and whatnot for the kids but you can control the speed here which is always a plus um, the finishing touches on the full wheeler again double-sided tape double-sided tape not going anywhere and i wanted to show the difference between a full life and a half life battery uh, this came with an impact drill and this was bought separately so it's just an m18 uh, battery but the good thing is again it, the half-life fits in here also so I can use either or doesn't matter which battery I'm putting in here both batteries fit in there perfectly and again I'll be able to use those for um, 
the power tools that I have, but just wanted to show you the final touches on here. Uh, I may shoot some screws in here, but at the moment I don't really feel a need to. But you can see a second ago when I plugged the battery in, the motor was generized. The DC motor was generized. Is that a word? Generized? And if you wait a couple seconds, you will see the light go off. So yeah, that's it for the full wheeler. We've got the car over here. Everything's ready for some M18 action. Again, I appreciate you watching. See y'all later.